everyone. I am Julian Morris welcoming you to another segment of the Channel 5 News. We begin with uh, the funeral, the uh, official funeral for the late uh, Stanley Fedel. I have with me uh, just outside the Bethesda Methodist Church, the leader of the Dominica Freedom Party, Mr. Kent Vital. It's good to have you with us, sir. We just we had to pull you out of the, of the service temporarily to get your thoughts on the passing of this um, uh, uh, former politician. Yes. Yes, Mr. Stanley Fedel, he was a great Dominican. One of those Dominicans that we want to remember, we want to emulate, we want to, 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 to recognize his contribution. He was a trailblazer in agriculture. He served in the public service and um, he was a sportsman as well. And, and he served the Dominican Freedom Party well and he never left the Dominican Freedom Party. But he was a man of great integrity. I, I, he was before my time and then I wouldn't know a, a lot of the details about him. But from everything you gather, from everything you hear, this was a, a great Dominican. And these are the kind of virtues that we want our people to emulate. Because with those kinds of virtues, we can go places, hard work. Um, in um, working smartly as well, um, being willing to, 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 to take a risk and, and having a heart for people and, and for family as well. He clearly was a great family man as well. But Johnson Boston would have a lot more of the details um, concerning Mr. Feather. Uh, Mr. Boston, you remember a lot more, I would imagine, than most people. Well, let me say good morning to you and to say that um, you have been doing a fantastic job taking into account um, with seriously battled by Hurricane Maria. So I compliment you on mapping and of course your team. But Mr. Fidel, of course, was a gentleman of a gentleman. He devoted his life to Dominica at an early age. You heard he went to school, primary school and secondary school and he went to Trinidad to study. And he could have stayed in Trinidad like some people and make his life here. But he came back to Dominica, working in the public service. He brought in JC's and Lions Club into Dominica and he went into farming, he bought an estate and created employment. You heard for about a hundred or more persons work on his estate. That tells you he had an interest in seeing people move forward. Then in Freedom Party was from 1968 and he became a part of that and contested the Grand Bay constituency in 1970. And the Grand Bay seat was Grand Bay and Pitt Savan was one seat. And he won the Grand Bay Pitt Savan constituency and served in Parliament from 1970 to 1975. In fact, himself and the late Anthony Moyes were the two in Parliament for the Freedom Party who brought in Miss Charles as a nominated member in 1970 because she ran the rules who enough seat and lost. Until in 1975, he contested when the seat was divided into two seats, Grand Bay on its own and Pitt on its own. He contested Pitt Savan and we had um, Avan Kazim who contested Grand Bay. Avan won in Grand Bay but Federal lost in Pittsburgh to Luke Carret. And then he stayed off from the parliament until 1980, when he contested for the Freedom Party and won, and again in 1985. And he lost in 1990 to Urban Baron by a mere 14 votes. It was very close. But the Pittsburgh, under his tenure, saw a lot of development. The areas was without electricity, which he brought in the area, telephone, um, water supply. The health services was improved, health centers were constructed. The Peter Savan Primary School, I remember when they were building that school, it was much younger, they were saying that they are getting a university in Peter Savan. Then the Bacadel School was constructed. The road from Geneva to Peter Savan was surfaced, properly done. And um, he kept with the people and so forth, and he brought development to them. And even his retired age, he continued to manage his estate and create employment. And he had, I remember when we went to see him once, he told us he had a team who come to him every Sunday. And they play domino, they say they have coconut water and a little booze on it and so on, and they entertain themselves. So some people look forward to have gone there on a Sunday afternoon to relax and to have a domino game. So he served well. He's a guy, as Ken said, that we should emulate. He's an honest person. He has shown a lot of integrity. In fact, having been one of the pioneers of the Freedom Party, he never fought for wanting to have a ministry. He was asked to serve. He served. He served on the Public Accounts Committee and other secretary boards and so on. But he never, as you heard inside a while ago, a man of vary, a man of style. Just a simple individual, but held his own. 
Johnson, uh, Boston, thank you very much. And of course, uh, leader of the Dominica Freedom Party, uh, Kent Vital. Both gentlemen, thank you to both of you, the most gracious of you, uh, allowing us to pull you out of the, of the uh, official uh, funeral uh, service for the late Stanley Fedel. And now it's a privilege to speak with the parliamentary representative for Petit Savan, the Honorable Kenneth Darrow, who, of course, attended the uh, uh, official funeral for the late Stanley Fedel. Your thoughts, sir? Well, yes, first and foremost, let me just extend my sympathies and condolences to the family and friends of the late Ralph Stanley Fedel. Um, indeed, um, Stanley Fedel, um, the name Stanley Fedel is synonymous with politics in the South, Grand Bay, and Petit Savan. Because prior to the constituencies being split up to Grand Bay and Petit Savan, the Grand Bay constituency consisted of, I think, Bellevue, Chopin's Church, and all the way back to Petit Savan. And he represented that very large constituency in Parliament, I think, in his very first term. Mr. Fedel, from what I recall, is so four terms as a member of Parliament. I'm under, of course, the leadership of the great, lit, great Dame Eugenia Charles. And I remember him, of course, as a schoolboy, I think primary school and maybe my early secondary school days. Um, he come in, of course, to meetings, doing his house house campaigning. And, of course, back in these days, I um, remember the, 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 the Petit Seven constituency was, uh, in fact, considered one of the Freedom Party strongholds. It was almost like a fait accompli that every time that Freedom Party would have won in Petit Seven. Of course, all this changed when I think the debutant Urban Baron ran for the very first time. In fact, I think this, um, I remember these results made regional and maybe international headlines that a debutant at Urban Barrow and had overthrown a great stalwart like, like Mr. Fedel. In his latter years, um, I had the opportunity to visit him. Um, very often, although it was quite a while, I hadn't been to his farm, but I would pass by every now and then, you know, sit with him for a few minutes, a few sometimes, an hour or so, and just to listen to him, you know, and he would, of course, offer his advice, because although he lived to, to a ripe old age of 93 years, he was still very astute up till the very end. You know, he knew what was going on. He followed um, the current events, regional, national, of course, and international events um, very closely. And he always had a lot of advice to offer. Very pleasant man, very pleasant man. I mean, um, you heard his um, eulogy, um, the way he treated his workers. You know, his workers were like home people. Of course, you know, back in the days that he, he owned a very, um, a very um, prominent, I would say, um, a very prosperous estate and um, he treated his workers um, with, with great respect and his workers love him. So it was no surprise that he, that he won this constituency for, for four terms, if I recall, um, quite handsomely every time until, of course, he, he, he was defeated at, at his final goal. But I really want to say that um, the South, in fact, Dominica, would have lost a, a great individual, a great man, not only from a political point of view, but a great man providing employment, as I said, on his farm for, for dozens of folks in the Bagatelle um, Forsythia area. And of course, I will miss my, my little chats with him every now and then, um, visiting him, of course, and his, his very um, sound advice. Yeah. Yeah. Coming up next on the Channel 5 News, we take a look into the impact of Hurricane Maria and the subsequent looting on jobs at HHV Wichich IGA. On business impact, we are looking at Wichich. Of course, it was one of the companies that was affected uh, by Hurricane Maria, of course, also by looting. I'm joined here with Jason Aird, uh, of course, the director of Wichich. Um, just give us an account of um, the damage that your company incurred as a result of um, Hurricane Maria. Okay, well, I think uh, everybody knows Wichich IG. Uh, that was flooded with four feet of water, um, uh, extensive damage. Our wholesale across the street uh, lost part of his roof and our distribution center at Kinfield was almost completely wiped out by the wind and by, uh, by the river as well. Uh, fortunately, our supermarket at Portsmouth, uh, we had some flooding, some damages and some looting, but uh, the police were able to get that under control very quickly. As we all know, unfortunately, there was extensive looting at all our properties and others in the city of Roseau. So while our wholesale was not too badly damaged, um, and we did have some flooding and some water damage, a lot of, uh, we had a lot of looting, uh, burglary going on, and that destroyed uh, a lot of the inventory that we had. Of course, uh, with this, all of this, um, uh, damage, if you were to put it that way, that the company incurred. Uh, we also see um, it possibly affecting the, the workers that um, are under your care. 
Unfortunately, yes, um, we had to lay off between 85 to 90 percent of our staff. Um, our retail and distribution businesses have been uh, set back by several months. A large number of our staff work in those departments. So fortunately, uh, you know, the shipping department with ferry services, insurance through Sajigo and Lloyds um, was not affected. Uh, these continued to operate almost immediately. Uh, people trying to get out of Dominica on the ferry, people coming in to file insurance claims, etc. So these departments were not affected. But uh, our retail staff, our distribution wholesale staff, yes, and our administrative staff that supported those uh, departments were also affected. The decision uh, was taken to keep a number of staff to clean, which we've been doing. It's been a long, slow process. And as we rebuild our operations, which we are going to do, then we will hire back as needed. Uh, which uh, brings me to my next question. Um, of course, the hurricane has, has passed, and of course, the company has suffered uh, some damage. But um, what's the plan moving forward for Wichich um, in terms of recovery? Um, Wichich has been here for 111 years. So I'd like to hope, I'd like to think that it will be here for at least another 111 years. So we are. Sorry, we are rebuilding the business one step at a time. We have a priority list in terms of uh, what we want to start with first, second and third, and so on. Um, we are essentially a lot of industries, one of which is uh, money transfer. And unfortunately, we've not been able to start Western Union simply due to a lack of power, um, electricity. That has meant that we've not been able to offer the Western Union service and hopefully within the next two days, once all the parameters have been put into place, we can start offering Western Union from our main location in Roseau only. There's still a security risk in the country, so uh, the other sub-agent locations we will not be able to do so. The second one that we will open will be our Portsmouth location sometime within the near future. The Express de Zeal uh, does Dominica St. Lucia, uh, Martinique, and there, was a great, there is a great demand for Dominicans and people who were caught here to leave. Um, it's very chaotic in the weeks after. Uh, a lot of people had to leave through the uh, Woodbridge Bay port. Now it has moved back to the ferry terminal so that some level of normalcy has returned. Uh, but from a few days after Express Azil was able to come in and offer the uh, services of evacuation for anybody who wanted to leave. What we're also finding now, a lot of Dominicans are taking the ferry to go to these islands to buy whatever they need and come back in, which is good. It means that not everybody's leaving. DHL uh, was able to restart limited operations about three weeks after uh, Maria bringing in relief supplies and then cargo into Dominica as well. So we are on a limited schedule. Um, it's still through Melville Hall and the um, packages are transported to Roseau and we do some delivery in and around Roseau, uh, or you can collect in our office. I think everybody knows which which is an institution. Um, we are the fourth generation, uh, and we plan to continue the business. It will take us some time. I'm not saying that it's going to be exactly the same. It will certainly be different, because we must adapt to the times with that. Which which is not going anywhere. Just be patient with us, and which which IG will be back uh, in Roseau. In Portsmouth, fortunately, we are probably 50% of our full capacity. We do not have refrigeration. Um, once we get that sorted out, we will have a fully functional supermarket. But for the time being, it's just dry goods that we are able to offer. So within the next three weeks, uh, we should be able to do that. So we believe that's a good thing. It will not be business as usual at WeChurch, as many of its employees are left to wonder what's next, as cleanup efforts continue post-Hurricane Maria. I am Kenny Williams, reporting for Channel 5 News. You are watching Channel 5 News. Coming up, an update on efforts by telecommunications company Flow to restore service to customers. Hello everyone and thank you for joining us on this edition of the Channel 5 News. Today's interview will be with Fodina Frampton, the Senior Marketing and Communications Executive of Dominica's full service telecommunications provider, Flow. Fodina, hello and thank you for coming on the Channel 5 News. 
Hi, good day to you, Andrea, and good day to the viewers of Channel 5 News. It is my pleasure. And, of course, our newscast consists of following up on the effects of Hurricane Maria on various aspects of Dominica. Now, flowers not left untouched. Tell us what damage the company sustained um, following the passage of the Category 5 storm, Maria. Uh, well, first of all, Andrea, let me commend um, Marpin, well, Marpin Flo, um, for taking the initiative to do an online segment of our news because we are not back and operating as yet, but we thought it was important that we keep our news aspect going, and as a result, we've actually now have an online version of the, the map in TV news, but it's going to be Flow TV soon as well. And, um, you know, we're happy that we're able to do that for our customers. Now, um, Andrea, this monster hurricane, um, Maria, did to us things that are unimaginable and things that we will never... Um, some things we'll never recover from. Um, our network got some damage, sustained damage as a result of Hurricane Maria. And we're talking about our mobile network, our fixed line network, um, our fiber network. And as a result, uh, customers would have been out of service following the storm. But I must mention that uh, our network surpassed all others during the course uh, uh, or the passage of, of um, Hurricane Maria. And we have stories of our customers talking about 3 o'clock in the morning, being able to receive calls from England and being able to talk to their family and being able to talk to their friends as early as the next morning. But what was even more amazing, Andrea, was that a day and a half later, customers were able to communicate again um, in the Rosa area. And I think that in itself is quite phenomenal. And um, we should be proud of ourselves for being able to connect customers and give them that opportunity to be able to communicate because there is nothing like not being able to talk to your mom or your dad or your brother or your sister, uh, family, friends, loved ones after uh, the passage of, of a hurricane like Maria. It's been just about a month since the storm. Give us an update on the restoration works of Flo thus far in terms of where they have reached, which communities are now you know, fully on board with the service. Andrea, first of all, we have to commend our teams, our guys, both from the Flo end and some of the mapping staff have teamed up with some of the flow technicians. I mean, we are one company, but you know how it is, right? And those guys have been working around the clock to get our customers communicating again, to get our customers connected, to get our customers back online. And we really, really have to commend those guys uh, for the work that they're doing. Um, to this date, we have nearly 50% of our mobile network back up and running and we have uh, that means about 24 out of our 49 sites are actually have been actually restored as we speak and we're working on getting as many more sites restored as possible we've done some work with the mobile with the fixed line network as well but the focus has really been on mobile as well as getting our corporate or business customers back up and functioning because as you would understand it is critical that commercial activity um you know picks up and without uh, our internet service or fiber service for most businesses they would require that um to get going again so we've been working very hard on getting the businesses up and running in terms of uh fixed line service we've done some work in roseau we've done some work in canefield st joseph portsmouth da mont daniel um, maho Pocasse as well so those areas but that though is contingent to the line to your home so while we would have restored service in those areas generally if you want to put it that way if there is an issue with the line to your home then there's a chance that you possibly may not get service right while you and i are not the ones out on the field clearing trees and drawing up lines i'm sure you're in touch with our technical team what sort of problems or hindrances do they come across in restoring service to the people of dominica oh, my andrea that in fact is a pretty good question and we want to um, 
explain something to customers and I'll use that opportunity because while we've said that we've restored service to over 24 mobile sites, you may find situations where customers may say, well, yesterday I had service in St. Joseph, but today I do not have service. And we've had a few challenges. Um, those challenges include theft. So we have uh, persons who steal the batteries. Um, you know, at or, or, or exchanges or at the sites where we have um, the cell sites. So again, we want to ask persons, please do not do that. So if somebody steals the battery, then of course the service is going to be affected. Um, you have persons stealing fuel. Yes. And if you steal the fuel, that means if we have a two-day gauge to refuel, What's going to happen one day later, there's going to be no service. So these are some of the challenges. Then we have the heavy equipment that um, we've had situations where um, while we, we know it's not intentional, they're doing their work, but they're sort of undoing some of the things that we've done. So you would find fiber being cut and, of course, customer services getting cut off. Um, so these are some of the challenges that our guys are facing out there. And um, we really just want... Anybody who can play a small role, no matter how small the role is, in making their job a little easier, do not cut the lines. Cutting the lines is, is going to cause some problems for us in restoring service. So, um, but other than that, though, Andrea, the guys are like, I don't know, they're like energizer bunnies. <laughs> you know, they keep going and they're really committed. And we're really happy for, for the, the effort and commitment they've been putting into it all. And as Dominica recovers from the crisis of Hurricane Maria, how would you, let's say, describe the support, I guess, by our parent company, Cayman Wireless Communications, um, towards us in this recovery effort? Yes, Andrea, um, we have what we call the Cable and Wireless Foundation. And um, this foundation is it was recently formed and is going to be providing financial support to the countries affected by um, Hurricane Maria, Irma, and um you know, some of the others. Um, it was started with an initial 500,000 US dollars. And, um, you know, it is being built upon as we speak. And, and again, you know, um, when you speak with GM, you know, he will share with you some more details about the Cable and Wireless Foundation and what it is that we plan to do, or what it is that we're going to do um, here in Dominica. Um, even from a, a, a support point of view, our president of Flow Caribbean, Gary Sinclair, actually paid a visit. So he was actually on the ground. He visited some of the sites where the guys were working. He visited some of us, you know, at the main building. Um, he visited some of the mapping staff, you know, to get a sense and to give us a, just a sense of comfort and encouragement and to let us know that the company is there with us, supporting us and making sure that when we do get out of this, we are going to be a better company. And what message would you like to leave with our viewers as we wrap up our interview? At this point, Andrea, we just want to remind our viewers that um, Flo has proven that we are the better telecommunications company here in Dominica. I mean, again, many customers were able to stay in touch where no other telecommunications uh, service provider was available. Customers were able to stay in touch with their families, with their friends, let them know what was happening while uh, Hurricane Maria was wreaking havoc on our country. Um, so, you know, we just want to say to you, when you're making a choice of telecommunications pro provider, um, Flow is definitely the choice that you should make. As we speak, we actually have two promotions on for our customers. We have our triple bonus, which is uh, for our prepaid combo plan. So anybody who activates a prepaid combo plan at the moment will get triple the talk, triple the text, and triple the data. Uh, customers who activate a new SIM or who purchase a new SIM from us actually get $10 um, free credit to call Flow to Flow numbers are uh, available to them for about 48 hours um, so take advantage of that uh, Flo, we just want to say to you that we've been there for you and we will continue to be there for you and just continue to make us your telecommunications provider of choice Fadana, thank you so much and have a great day thank you Andrea <laughs> and there we heard from Fadana Frampton senior marketing and communication executive for Dominica's leading telecommunications provider Flow. I am Andrea Lee reporting for Channel 5 News